What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one it's transfer tips for game week 29. So as always I'm going to go through some of the popular players being moved into people's teams and taken out and give you my opinion on whether they are good moves or not. So if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. So let's start with Pedro Parra. Nearly 100,000 transfers in this week and obviously some of those will be free hit transfers rather than standard ones but it doesn't matter. Either way he's coming into people's teams in game week 29 and i think he's a really nice option if it's a one week only punt is fulham away a guarantee of a clean sheet i would say probably not i would not be surprised if fulham score in that game but there's not many other clean sheets up for grabs so i wouldn't really worry about that too much and if it's a standard transfer you then get luton at home in 30 west ham away in 31 and forest at home in 32 now some of you might be wildcarding in 30 or 31 and so the fixtures afterwards don't make a difference but there are some people out there without any chips whatsoever so basically over the next four game weeks i really like poro is he as attacking as he was earlier on this in the season the numbers suggest probably not as much and he has lost some set pieces to james madison who's now back fit but i think he is the most attacking defender in that spurs team does that mean Udogi and romero are never going to get attack and returns of course not but if i was putting my money on in any given game week it would always be pedro Parry. so i do like him i think well not i think some people have asked me whether or not Udogi is the one to go for instead now on free hit in 29 i think the only reason to go for Udogi over Poro is ownership because no matter what transfers come in this week Poro will be higher owned so if you want to take a little bit of a risk on that and go for the one that's slightly lower owned and if he does better big differential you could do that but for me i just think using the free hit is differential enough i'd probably go for the slightly more upside with poro um if it's a standard transfer or maybe you're looking to wildcard in 30 or 31 and have a spurs defender i'd strongly consider udogi because of the price difference right if we go to spurs now poro is 5.7 which is still potentially good value for what he offers but Udogi's 4.9. There's now a 0.8 million difference. Now, if it's a transfer in, in 29 and 30, then you're wildcarding in 31. And that extra money on Poro is not going to make a difference this week or next. Then I'd go for Poro. But if there's a chance that that money gets in the way, right, that extra money you've spent gets in the way of another move, or you don't have um, chips to use, and this is a long-term transfer in, I think I would take the 0.8 million saving. Because at some point soon, if all attackers, our favourite attackers over the next few weeks are fit, you might be trying to fit in the likes of Haaland and Salah and Son and Saka, and suddenly the money gets a bit tighter than it has been over the last few weeks. So I still think that Poro is the better defender over Udogi for FPL, but I don't think it's so much that I'd spend 0.8 million at this point. I think earlier on in the season when people were making this decision, the money was a lot closer. That's not the case now. So just to summarise... I think good transfer in whether you're free hitting or not because of the next four fixtures. I think Poro is better than Udogi, but as a long term move, I'd probably save the money. Yeah, I think Poro is better than Udogi, but as a long term move, I'd probably save the money and go for Udogi instead. So let's stick to Spurs and talk about James Madison next. And I think the discussion is very similar to Pedro Poro. So Madison has had nearly 100,000 transfers in that's going to be split across free hit and standard moves. Either way, he's a great player to bring in for game week 29. The only slight difference is I can make a case for going through Doggy over Poro because of that price difference. I think it's very difficult to do that between Madison and Son. And I know the price difference is big. Madison is 8 million, Son is 9.9. But I wouldn't sacrifice Son unless I absolutely had to. He's got higher goal threat than Madison, plus he's on penalties as well. And I think that is worth paying that premium for. Of course, your team might be in a slightly different position where if you go for Madison over Son, that enables something big later on fair enough but for most people son has to be the number one midfielder to bring in this week and then i think whatever your chip strategy is the next best player to bring in is probably madison because if you're wildcarding in game week 31 then you get the loot in a home game in 30 and i think fulham away and loot in a home for madison is better than any of bailey uh, douglas louise or even jared bowen or kudos or anyone like that so i think for a short two game move he's the better option i even think for game week 29 only he's probably better than any of those midfielders i've listed i think on free hit in 29 some people might be tempted to go for a spurs punt in attack like brennan johnson kulisevsky or someone like that i don't mind it but i think madison is clear of both of those because you've got the guaranteed minutes i think maybe go for one of those plays in addition to madison and son maybe a spurs triple up 
but I'm not sure I'm interested in Brennan Johnson instead of Madison. I just think the free hit is differential enough. And if you're on no chips, right, then you get West Ham away in 31 and Forest at home in 32. The fixtures do get a bit trickier for Spurs after that, but they will have double game weeks to come later on as well. And players like um, Douglas Louise, Bailey, etc., they just won't, right? So West Ham and Villa are not going to double later on. And also, we're going to talk about Douglas Louise in a minute. Villa's fixtures are going to get trickier soon too. So I think Madison, like I said, is the second best midfielder to bring in behind Son, whether you're free hit, whether you're wildcard 30, wildcard 31, or just no chips whatsoever. So yes, the goal last week, obviously, people are had in there. But I still think he's worth bringing in now. Good fixtures to come. So as I've already mentioned him, let's talk about Douglas Louise next. Nearly 40,000 transfers in already this week. And I think whichever chip strategy you're on, it's the wrong time to buy Douglas Louise. And that is not me sitting here saying that he's a terrible FPL option. I haven't thought that for a very long time. In fact, in game week 26, I think when people were looking at Aston Villa midfielders, because they played in 26 and 29, they didn't want to use their free hit chip. I preferred Louise over Leon Bailey, right? You've got guaranteed minutes and penalties as well. But I think in game week 29 itself, whatever your chip strategy is, there's a better midfielder to buy unless money is going to be an issue. Because at 5.7 million, Douglas Dewey's offers you pretty much a guaranteed 90 minutes every week, plus those penalties, which I've already mentioned. So he's still a fairly good value player. But I think if you're on no chips, then over the next five game weeks, Villa have got to play City away and Arsenal away, which is not ideal. Kamara is out, I think, for the season. McGinn is surely going to get suspended for three games after that red card as well. So he's going to miss game weeks 29, 30, and 31. And look, I think sometimes we over-exaggerate how bad a team is going to be when certain players miss out. But it's not an ideal situation for that Aston Villa midfield to be missing Kamara and McGinn. So that plays into my thinking. I just think there are better options over the next five game weeks if you're on no chips. Like even James Madison, for example. Yes, he's more expensive, but if you can afford it, he will also then double down the line. If it's a one game week only punt for game week 29... I don't mind it if you really want a Villa midfielder and Leon Bailey starts midweek because if he does start um, in the European game, that will worry me about his minutes for the weekend. But if he doesn't, I think Leon Bailey is a much more exciting pick for one week only, especially if Villa don't get any penalties. Bailey is much more likely to get your returns from open play. And if it's a two game week move, so for 29 and 30 before you wildcard, again, I come back to James Madison as an option with Luton at home. That is a much more interesting fpl pick for me than douglas louise as long as the money is fine right if you're someone that really wants to get salary in game week 30 and buying james madison will mean you can't do that then fair enough maybe you go for louise instead but for most people where money is no issue i think no chips free hit or just a standard transfer in there are more exciting moves to make it might get to the point on free hit where you know, Leon Bailey is a minutes risk, so is Brennan Johnson, so is Alanga, so is Aaron E. And there's just a lot of players you don't want to risk, and therefore you go for Louise. And I don't hate it, but I think as a one game week move, there are more exciting players to go for. So I'm not completely ruling out uh, Douglas Louise coming into my own free hit, but I think it's quite unlikely. So he has been brilliant this season, and I'm sure once again, now I've said this, he'll score in 29 and in game week 30, and they won't be penalties. But like I said, I just think for most people, there are more interesting players to bring in this week. So let's move on to Dominic Solanke. Nearly 100,000 transfers out already this week. And I think it's quite nice to talk about him before Bournemouth play Luton because then it doesn't come across as complete hindsight. Obviously, he hasn't done very well in the first game of double game week 28 against Sheffield United. Missed a penalty on a zero pointer. And the fact that Bournemouth don't have a game in 29 and people are going to wildcard soon is definitely playing into selling him. So I completely get that. Uh, and obviously, he's got this knee issue as well. That doesn't worry me a huge amount just because they seem to be managing it pretty well. But I guess his minutes against Luton will tell us just how fit he really is. If he plays 80 to 90 minutes in that game, then for me, he's not really much of a concern moving forward until he starts missing games and minutes and stuff like that. Now, obviously, in 29, lots of teams don't have a fixture. So selling players that don't play cannot punish you. And again, if you're wildcarding soon, it's not an issue whatsoever. The only thing I would say about Solanke is Bournemouth do have a game against Wolves to rearrange. And there is a chance it goes into game week 34. So potentially within the next six game weeks, Bournemouth could have a double. It is not guaranteed that match could go into game week 37 instead. But it's a possibility. And after 29, they got Everton at home, Palace at home, Luton away. 
next three game weeks. Then it's Man United at home in 33. And if they did double in 34, one of the fixtures would be Villa away. So Solanke plays all those games. I still think he's a really good option, right? And at 7.2 million, he's not massively expensive. Now, what's the move that everyone is making, right? If they're not free hitting, it's probably to buy Ivan Tony. And I don't hate that whatsoever. Tony's a really good pick, right? He's nailed on penalties, etc. And the fixture this week is good, Burnley away. And actually, the fixtures afterwards for Brentford have probably gone under the radar a little bit, especially for attackers. So after Burnley away in 29, they've got four matches, obviously, between 30 and 33. And three of them are home games. So Man United are home, Brighton are home, Villa away, and Sheffield United are home. And in 34, it's Luton away. And actually, Brentford's fixtures from now until the end of the season are pretty decent. It then goes on Everton away, Fulham at home, Bournemouth away, Newcastle at home. Now, realistically, you are not going to have Ivan Tony for the rest of the season. There'll be too many double game weeks going on to have him as one of your forwards. But as a short-term move to get a game in 29 and then the fixtures afterwards is pretty nice. And if Bournemouth don't double in 34, there's no real need to have Solanke over Tony. So I think it's a good move. The only way I see it being not even a bad move, but a less than ideal move, is if that double gets announced and obviously Tony blanks in 29, as in he doesn't get any points, because then it's a transfer out for Solanke and then probably a transfer back in, because realistically, if he's not injured, most people would probably want him for double game week 34. I think overall, I would just take the risk. Like, Bernie away is such a good fixture that Tony might get enough points to warrant, you know, bringing him in and then taking a back out if you need to. The, the double is not guaranteed in 34 either. And also, it's not like Bournemouth are the only team that could double that week anyway. Like, if Man United have Newcastle at home and Sheffield United at home as their double game week, which is possible but not guaranteed, um, then someone like Hoyland will definitely be an option as well. I know most people are against Man United. I get it right. They haven't been great. But if it's Newcastle at home and Sheffield United at home, I mean, forget how bad Sheffield United have been this season. Newcastle defence is terrible at the moment as well. So that would be a good option. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, even if you take Solanke out and Bournemouth double in 34, there might be other options as well, like Isaac, for example, Newcastle could double, Hoyland, etc. So I think for me, I would probably make that move. I just think there is a scenario where you take him out and you've got to bring him straight back in. If Tony doesn't do well in between, you are going to be down on points. But for me, I would take the risk in a blank game week to get someone with a uh, fixture especially when it's such a good one. So Solanke, whether you're free hitting or just, you know, not using any chips, probably a pretty good move out, um, but could punish you, right? Because Bournemouth do have good fixtures. And as someone that's free hitting in 29, I'm quite glad that I'm getting Solanke back. I'm just hoping he's going to stay fit and that Bournemouth double in 34. So my opinions on Kevin De Bruyne as an FPL pick are not going to be all that surprising. And for anyone that's not free hitting, I can't see any reason why you would keep hold of him. If you've got a strong reason why you think he's worth holding on to, then let me know. I know his record against Arsenal is pretty good, etc. I'm sure some people will say that. But Arsenal is a tough fixture these days. And it's a blanking game week 29. And you can't even be completely assured about his minutes. And he costs 10.5 million. Let's not forget, he is the second most expensive midfielder in the game. And the third most expensive player, right? Only Salah and Haaland are more expensive. And he's just not worth it for that price. You don't have guaranteed minutes. You don't have penalties. And the next two game weeks are not great. A blank and then Arsenal at home. And after that, okay, you might look at it as a differential. Villa at home, Palace away and Luton at home. With European matches and stuff like that, is he going to play all those matches? Again, it's not a guarantee. And I think he gets in the way of other better picks. All of Saka, Salah and uh, Son are nailed on. And they've got... Um, penalties as well I appreciate with Salah at the moment there's an injury concern there or, or fitness concerns I should say not injury because the last two games he's come off the bench but if he proves his fitness right Salah is going to be one of those players that everyone wants to get because it's Brighton at home in 30 and Sheffield United at home in 31 so unless Salah has another injury that keeps him out I just don't see a place for De Bruyne at that price point I just don't think there's any justification whatsoever. Like, you look at the last few game weeks, 68 minutes against Liverpool. So, in that game, right, big game. If you can get the win in that, that's huge for the title race. And he brings off Kevin De Bruyne after 68 minutes. That's not something you would have seen in the past. 90 minutes against Man United, great. Six minutes against Bournemouth. He missed the Brentford game. Just too much of a worry for me. I'm sure he'll start against Arsenal. I've got no doubts about that. 
But I just think moving forward, there could be games where he gets rested. And he's not getting any younger, right? He is a fantastic footballer. He's probably been one of the best, if not the best, in some people's eyes, midfielder that's ever graced the Premier League, right? Uh, I'm not going to get into that discussion right now. The age catches up with everyone. He's going to be 33 in the summer. And Man City are pretty shrewd with their transfers. I wouldn't be completely surprised uh, if they end up selling him. Again, that's another discussion for a different kind of video. But overall, I come back to the point. I just don't see any good argument to why he is a good FPL pick. Mostly because he gets in the way of, in my opinion, better FPL picks. So blank this week, Arsenal in 30. Whatever chip strategy you're on, he should probably be going in game week 29. So there's a few people looking to get rid of Bakayo Saka this week, and I completely get it because Arsenal don't have a fixture, and then in game week 30, they run into Man City away. And a bit like I said with Dominic Solanke, any player that doesn't have a fixture in 29 is worth thinking about getting rid of, especially if you're going to use your wildcard soon in game weeks 30 or 31, because you can always bring them back in. And I know, obviously, Saka has been on an incredible run recently, which did come to an end against Brentford, but overall, he's a great FPL pick. And the fact he's nailed on and on penalties definitely means he could score against Man City. But if you're placing bets on it, that is the kind of fixture where his points potential is definitely limited. For my team, it makes sense to probably play him. But I think if you've got the luxury of getting rid and then bringing him in for game week 31, that makes a lot of sense. Because Arsenal's fixtures from now until the end of the season, or sorry, from 31 until the end of the season, are pretty decent, especially for an attacker. So you've got Luton at home in 31, Brighton away in 32, Villa at home in 33, Wolves away in 34. And then after that, there's a double game week to come as well. So long-term move, I like Saka. And if I had no chips, I'd probably keep hold of him. But as a short-term move to get rid, I like it. The one worry that people have is his price, right? So for me, if I have a look here, I bought him for 8.5. He's gone up to 9.2. So I can sell him for 8.8. .8. Um, so if I have to buy him back, it's going to cost me 0.4 million. And some people will be worried about that, and I get it, especially for a player you'll almost certainly want back. But he will drop in price because of the blank, and maybe for Man City away as well, as people take short-term punts ahead of the wild card. I looked on Fantasy Football Hub. You can see the price change. It's completely free. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and Saka is somewhere here. Yeah, Saka's here. He is at minus 94.85% to drop in price. Once a player gets close to 100, they're quite likely to drop. So even if that doesn't happen today, uh, it could happen tomorrow, which is what Hub is predicting. So Saka is likely to go down in price. So straight away, you know, it's going to cost me 0.4 to get him back. Once he drops in price, it's only 0.3. And if he gets another price drop, suddenly the gap to buying him back gets a lot smaller. So ultimately, points are what you want. And if selling Saka this week gets you Madison or Son for two really good fixtures, I would take that risk and not worry too much about the price. I think for a lot of people, that's the only thing that's maybe stopping them selling him. And I get it, right? He could do really well against City. And if he does, you know, the price starts to go back up very quickly. But at that point, you'll probably be wildcarding. So free hit, it's easy to take him out, of course. No chips, I'd maybe keep hold of him. But if you are someone that's going to wildcard in 30 or 31, I think Saka is a pretty good player um, to get rid of and just hope you don't get too screwed over by those price changes if you've enjoyed that video give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already rate five stars if you listen on podcast and like i said links to fantasy football hub price change and stuff like that description below otherwise i'll leave it there i'll catch you again tomorrow